good evening all hey good evening rameshwar hello. good morning everyone hello hello hey bajun how are you good how are you <clears throat> well, thank you hey manola how are you hi hi fine thanks fine excellent uh, looks like we are all... let's wait a couple of more minutes for everyone to get in Okay. Meanwhile, I'll start sharing my screen. And if there is anything specific that anyone wants to add to the agenda item, please call it out. Uh, let's share screen. Okay. Uh... Anyone wants to add anything to the agenda? Uh, maybe we can uh, get a quick update from the service mesh. Yes. Uh, I stand the the select channel uh, manual. Uh, I should like to present uh, oh, the okay. new problem statement and uh, and requirement for identity access management today. So. Okay. Uh, second round. This is second round, right? So, right. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, I guess we have a quorum. Uh, let's. Uh, let, let's quickly go through the meeting notes and the, the task list, if anything, from the previous secrets management user store uh, document review. I'm not sure if there was any updates, uh, Prashant. Were there any updates based on the comments? Uh, I, I remember there were major updates, right? Yeah, so I, I made the document like more formal, like mm -hmm. make made the requirements into a checklist and all that. So we can have a re-review for that. Okay. Okay, so ready for a re-review, okay. Let me just mark it down as an action item. Uh, I, th I think some of these things, right? It would be good to have some of offline discussion because uh, offline discussion in the sense outside of the SIG security meeting. Uh, uh, because if you have to converge on something uh, very fast, uh, we need to have focused discussions and that might not be possible to be done in 15 minutes time that we are having here. So, so I know that some of you folks are already doing some sort of uh, discussions outside of this meeting. So, so keep it up. Uh, please let us know if we want, if you want some sort of coordination to be managed. I see Shubhash, uh, your hand raised. Anything in the context? Shubhash? Uh, can't hear you. You are, yeah. Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, actually, uh, last time we were uh, reviewing a uh, uh, package validation uh, user story, but there yeah. was time on that, right? So I was not able to clarify a few of the queries that was raised from the BIM. So, mm -hmm. so I think that we can clarify and uh, and uh, at least I'm not seeing any comments on the user story. So, I think the, there was a call for review and there were two reviews. Uh, I think uh, from the Slack channel based on Slack channel, I saw that there was a call for review. Let's give time, uh, some more time to the to the folks, and then mm -hmm. we'll see if we can get. Uh, maybe it would be nice to actually keep uh, pushing for the review on the Slack channel itself. Uh, anyways, if we, anyone from uh, we will call for a, 
review call for review again uh, yeah hmm? actually i requested in the slack also uh okay. like uh, to leave the comments but i did not receive anything okay okay uh, let's see uh, the, uh, if, if you have to explicitly call for a review for, from this team okay Okay, uh, service mesh requirements review. Beyond, I think uh, uh, you had, uh, you know, you have already yeah. posted some comments. Uh, yes, I, I did, I did, and then uh, she responded, and then I was, yeah, the, and then one uh, comment is, um, she said uh, we're gonna focus on the network function service mesh first, then built-in nephew component. Uh, so we need to make some kind of agreement in this group. So is it the right priority or any concern, suggestion? So other than that, uh, I have no uh, particular special uh, the, the okay. comment on the service mesh. Okay. That's the only comment I have now. Got it. I, th I think from both service mesh and secrets management perspective, right? Like the, the primary thing that keeps popping up in my head is uh, <clears throat> how do we do the, the identity part, right? Like both of them depend upon identity. Yes, that is something that we need to figure out. Uh, before going to yes, the so because so. the mm -hmm. identity access management pro, we're gonna map between user man uh, manual are gonna uh, to present, but we're gonna map the user and then uh, workload, you know, identity together, and then <clears throat> probably the we might need a service mesh. Uh, the implementation is possible there. So that means it's possible we are uh, tackling the uh, nephew built-in component service mesh. But anyway, so uh, she put the priority on the network function service mesh. So anyway, we need to discuss, okay? So, and when uh, she talking about that, we can uh, talk yeah, about sure. it. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, so basically I put that, yeah, I think uh, we'll just discuss that. And there are a couple of other points also you mentioned about personas for uh, yes mm -hmm. uh, this one so that I'll add uh, uh, sequence diagram and I'll put my proposal in after this okay. meeting and as Raul mentioned we can have a offline discussion in Slack and then you know we can close on those issues that should be sure. yeah. yeah once once she uh, the point we posted another one I'm gonna uh, go through a second you know additional reviews and then we're gonna uh, chat. You know, between Chev and others offline as needed. Okay, that's the plan right now. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for that update. Uh, I think on that note, let's move on to uh, Manuela uh, for the presentation, uh, and then we'll move on to the service. Mm -hmm. Like, let's let's get out the thoughts. Uh, Manuela, do you have anything to share? Uh, so uh, yes, I think that is a uh, uh, public. Uh, yes, it was, it's public. Uh, uh, do you see my screen? Uh, no, I'm not able to use. Okay, maybe I'm not able to use. Uh, choose that share. This one share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I push the right. Okay. Do you see? You got it. Yeah, we can see. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, the, the same document that uh, my colleague Brian presented uh, last week, two weeks ago, I don't mm -hmm. remember. And uh, we modified a little bit it according to uh, the comments that uh, we received. And uh, maybe uh, the initial comment was to clarify uh, the problem statement. And for this, uh, we better split the proposal in uh, uh, what we wanted to solve, introducing this feature in Nephew, and uh, how uh, it is better to do it. So let's split and put here in the problem statement only uh, the, the problem. And uh, okay, I, I, I follow and uh, I read a little bit and then uh, uh, you can intervene uh, uh, whenever you want and uh, we can have a conversation. So uh, the first point uh, is that uh, obviously NEFIO controls resources uh, and uh, the approach is the, the new uh, configuration as data. Uh, and so every resource is a version and package and uh, uh, in order to enforce the access control to single pieces of data very 
little small pieces of data, uh, the traditional airbac uh, is not enough. Uh, the traditional airbac based on uh, the API endpoint uh, is not enough. Uh, and so uh, we need to, uh, and this is uh, the first problem, we need some more evolved mechanism uh, going into the tail of the attribute uh, to filter uh, the access. Okay, and this is the first point. Then the second point is that uh, um, we're going to have uh, several different uh, 3PP AIM uh, that could coexist. Uh, and this is mandatory because uh, in our solution, the customer already will have their own infrastructure for their virtual function. Uh, perhaps uh, this uh, infrastructure will be based on uh, some uh, uh, hyperscale cloud provider as Google, Azure, or Amazon. And uh, this is already there. Uh, we, can, uh, we have to coexist with it. And then uh, we also need to address uh, some mechanism to provide a single sign-on and uh, accountability for a complex system where uh, different uh, uh, identity and access management uh, uh, coexist. Uh, then, uh, okay, this is uh, the third and the fourth point uh, is pretty obvious. We need to introduce the definition of, of uh, the human users, the application client, uh, as well as the workload identities and also the, uh, their access control. Uh, and then, uh, and this is important for me, uh, we have also uh, a traceability and accountability topic. Uh, we should provide information about the full flow of, of the information in the system. And, and this include uh, uh, where they come, the external user or the client machine to machine, all the uh, involved uh, workload identities uh, till the end uh, uh, below uh, at the uh, resources on the traffic clusters. And, and we need to have a path for this uh, in order to provide information on who is the real author of the performed operation. Okay? Uh, so if I go a little down, I, I put this picture uh, only for uh, example. Uh, someone is speaking may, to intervene or uh, sorry? Can, can everyone else please be on mute? Thank you. Oh, it, it wasn't a problem for me. Eh? It, it was just that maybe <laughs> it was a question and uh, I didn't see it. Uh, no, anyway, uh, OK, OK, OK. Uh, I put this picture that uh, I take from uh, a meeting, uh, a use case architecture meeting in Nephew. Uh, and this, uh, I put this here, uh, just an example to show you uh, how many uh, access points we have in the system. Okay, potentially we have, because we go inside the system and here we have a potential authentication and access control point. And for each interface that, that are the external one, the internal one, but also the, the other external one, the one that reach the uh, traffic cluster uh, for the deployment of network function and so and so forth. So I think that is a good example to push on the requirement that we have uh, to introduce this uh, uh, identity and access management uh, feature. Uh, then uh, this ration, I didn't change anything with respect to the, the past version of this document. And uh, we touched just uh, a little bit the requirement. Um, this is more or less the same as uh, <clears throat> when Brian presented it, but uh, we introduced because uh, we had a, a, a conversation last time about the workload uh, identities because, uh, okay, in this new world, uh, uh, we don't have just external uh, and client user coming from uh, outside, but uh, we also have uh, to control the access to every single resource. And uh, uh, in order to, to be able to control the access to these resources, we also need to identify these resources and then uh, give them uh, identities. 
And so uh, we put also this uh, workload identity and access control administration and configuration, because once we define them, uh, we also need to configure, put uh, uh, some uh, uh, detail, some optionality. And so we need to configure credential management. And we put here some more generic credential management because uh, it's not a password as for the user or a secret or certificate as for the client. We still need to investigate a little bit, which is the best way to provide uh, some uh, uh, credential, some, uh, how to say, uh, document that certified that uh, that workload is exactly what uh, uh, it's supposed to be. Uh, and then we also need to configure some uh, fine-grained access control configuration because, as I said at the beginning, uh, RBAC is not enough now uh, because we need to go inside the, in, in the intimate of, of the data because maybe it's required to check and to filter the access according to a specific, a specific value of a parameter of a package uh, uh, that we configure uh, with the with the porch. Uh, okay. Ah, a, a last one, but uh, really important. Uh, we add this requirement that is uh, auditability, traceability, and accountability. Uh, because, uh, as I said also in the problem statement, uh, we need to understand uh, who is performing action in our system uh, for security reason to check uh, uh, for uh, debugging uh, also to collect the statistic but anyway we need to understand all the flow of the data and who is the originator and who has the responsibility of the modification on the system uh, okay more or less okay then this is just as it was last time and uh, we didn't change the component architecture because uh, we think that uh, is better as, as is a large co consortium is better that we proceed together. Uh, so every step that we go forward, we, we all agree on it and uh, we, we can have a solution that is, uh, is fitting uh, everyone need. Any comment, question? Yes, I have, we have a question. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I have a question and a comment. Uh, so basically, uh, look, the in terms of the requirements for the workload identity, uh, these requirements are too sparse, too high level. Uh, I think uh, usually what happens. Let me explain in the context of workload identity and versus versus user identity. When people think about workload identity, they assume that if we can generate an access token in the context of uh, the portal and you use that access token for accessing the APIs that could be considered as workload identity or client, but that is not what uh, workload identity can be categorized as. If we imagine that new applications can be deployed across multiple edge clusters, those applications mm -hmm. needs to attest and prove their identity so that they mm -hmm. can have access to the resources. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the attestation requirements? All of these things have to be considered as part of workload identity. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think towards that end, we we need we need we have to ensure that workload identity requirements are clearly captured to the point where it is granular enough to be taken up from the reference implementation point. Of view. So so you know I, I, I this is still sparse from the workload identity perspective. It's it's the, the, this is a good requirement from the user and client identity perspective. I can clearly mm -hmm. see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Vim has a point. Next. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, do you do you have, a, hmm, okay, this is an example, do you have a, a, a potential list of... Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. I, think, I think that would be required. I think that okay, would be required. If, if you can share, uh, yeah. I, I, can, uh, I can put it uh, and uh, I integrate your comment uh, in, in the document if you... Yeah, so, so right now I don't have it, but in the sense that, you know, uh, but till the next meeting, I intend to prepare mm -hmm. as to as to what okay, the okay. Be and then share. Okay, perfect, perfect. Because you know uh, this list now is so short because uh, for me is um, we are at the beginning on uh, on sure. this. Uh, okay, but uh, you're right uh, for sure. We have to. Super. Okay. okay. 
Yeah. No, my <clears throat> see, I think this is a very good uh, baseline, right? So now my my main question that I have is the following: is that uh, in my view, nothing is unique to nephew here, right? So let's say I, if we move forward here, is it basically collecting? Uh, is it about putting the right components together and following the best practices that we are aiming for to accomplish? Or do we believe that there are missing components that are not available in our ecosystem today that needs to be added to accomplish this? Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, what I have in mind is that, uh, as I put also in uh, the point two, I think, uh, okay, uh, not everything that is here uh, could be a, really a, mo a new module, uh, a, a new uh, service uh, uh, inside the nephew. Because, for example, uh, uh, the EAM uh, that uh, the customer use are their own. This is uh, already true now. Yeah. Okay, so for yeah. sure they, they are outside. And for that, uh, we need anyway. Uh, uh, to, to address the impact that we have uh, as an FU system, because we need to define the requirement uh, on the interface toward uh, this uh, external system. Uh, and this is a first point. Instead for, uh, uh, let me say, I'm not really, really sure, but uh, my idea for the uh, management cluster, uh, the cluster where uh, we really uh, deploy the NEFIO system, parts and everything, uh, together, I think that in this case, uh, uh, the, um, the, the, the EAM uh, service, uh, set of services could be also internal to NEFIO, but maybe configurable because uh, uh, we, we cannot uh, oblige, we, we cannot put this uh, as a constraint uh, to everyone that wants to use the NEFIO system. So uh, it makes sense to me that is internal, but uh, optional, uh, meaning that uh, if, you, if uh, someone wanted to use another one that is external, uh, it could. Uh, Henry, but... uh, can I ask a question uh, so before you? Do you see any yes. nephew specific uh, identity access management? You think typically if you're using the item and then other uh, ITP and then uh, service mesh sourcing is pretty generic. So do you, mm -hmm. if you see there any um, nephew specific uh, the list, then you will, you will helpful for us to narrow down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you see any? Yeah, that's a similar uh, question than me. So, so in other words, so, so I think Bin Yung has the same, a uh, similar question than me, right? So it's, if I look to this, what you have here, it's a fair, I, let's say, a fairly generic set of capabilities mm -hmm. that are not necessarily specific to nephew. Right. Do you agree with that? Right. So. Yes. So given. So if that's the case, that means that we basically are right, collecting pieces, uh, or we are putting together a reference implementation based on mm -hmm. components that somewhere are available. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That's. And so what we want to do is, I, so for example, I think there is one issue in Forge, by the way, mm -hmm. that, uh, I, or, or, I mean, which is related to this, uh, this domain is that today, okay, he is the only one who has access to Git, but there is no trail of the actual component that actually updated the packages. So everything is Forge. <laughs> Which is mm -hmm. not so good idea. <laughs> okay, okay. So and, okay and the composition, you mean? Uh, we miss uh, the composition. <laughs> we just call uh, the entire bubble. Yeah. So, so for example, I mean, everything that Porsche does is based on Porsche, right? So the identity <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. system inside of Porsche is not really <clears throat> existing. But for me, this is a specific issue for Porsche as such, right? Mm -hmm. If I go wider uh, to the workload cluster and stuff like that you would uh, use an identity system that is available onto the market. You make sure that we follow the best practices, we add that to the component, and as a result, we, we achieve that. Whether we, uh, in our reference implementation or, or labs, use an internal or external identity system shouldn't really matter, right? Because the customer yes, will- Yes, yes, I, I totally agree. Forever. 
Yeah. I, I totally agree. I mean, when I, I say it's optional, I mean that uh, uh, we, we can provide, okay, a, a reference architecture, as you said, uh, and maybe that uh, for uh, test uh, purpose uh, or uh, to, to have a, a, a fast setup and deployment, uh, we, we can propose to use mm -hmm. uh, kick key clock uh, as internal one, but the typical use case will be having an external one. And uh, again, I have uh, sure. uh, me too, the, the, the question that uh, also last time I tried to, to, to put here, maybe it wasn't so clear. I'm not sure because now, Nephew, as you said, there is porch, porch, porch. Uh, uh, I don't know if we have also uh, on top of the workload identities. Also some other user, meaning that uh, they are not the one that uh, uh, propose modification on porch, porch package, but uh, something else, some uh, uh, administration task uh, to do that uh, is not in involving specifically uh, the, the, this uh, life cycle uh, of uh, packages. Uh, and then uh, no one answer, or maybe uh, I, I didn't understand it. Uh, uh, which opinion you have uh, <clears throat> a, a, about uh, uh, different users coming from the uh, extern outside that uh, are not addressing uh, porch packages? There is something like this in nephew. Yes. Yeah, so okay. So for us, we so we mainly use ports as our let's say spy or to actually fan out uh, certain uh, configuration uh, artifacts, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, nothing prevents you from a human adding a, a manifest into a package and uh, into a Git uh, repo that is basically consumed directly by config sync. That is uh, mm -hmm. possible. We are not preventing that, if you see what I mean. Okay, okay, so, okay. Now, we are not messaging or focused on that right now, right? Because we are mainly focused on making that pipeline uh, work at the moment. But nothing prevents you if you deploy, let's say, a nephew like system to go and do that without Porch, that whole pipeline, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you could... uh, I mean, yes, my idea, uh, it wasn't just uh, without porch, but just as a, not as an alternative. Also complementing but, porch. But, but yeah. Exactly. Complementing, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Yes. Correct, so that's possible, right? So you have humans that can go straight into the Git repo and, and manipulate the data themselves. That's uh, possible. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, and this for me is a, an important reason uh, uh, to, to, to promote this um, IAM feature. That is, uh, yeah. as we agree, I think, uh, the, um, the major part of the case is external, but maybe also internal. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. For, to, mm -hmm. to, for reference implementation, uh, after we uh, agree with the problem statement, this is my personal view, and then requirement, this is the, uh, the the baseline requirement. Then uh, for reference implementation for R3, maybe we need to have some kind of user story. Uh, like film, for example, like for example, admin user, uh, you know, need to access securely to uh, the item. And then also security uh, connecting to porch. And then, you know, also uh, one of the picture uh, described the, the there's approval. Anything anybody try to um, change the uh, the hydrate the uh, package, and they need to when they merging into porch, they need to approval. You can do it or not. That's one of the example of role base or some attribute where you can change what you can change merging into porch and then moving into config sync. So that kind of a somewhat detail uh, for reference implementation, uh, the team may be needed. Uh, that's yeah. my now, uh, Bijong, if, if, if you ask me, I mean, what is our no, biggest the challenge? Team. What's yeah, the so biggest for challenge? The yeah. so for me, I the biggest ahead. challenge we have right now, in my I, from my perspective, is we need to resolve the, uh, which started as a secret management discussion, is mm -hmm. the uh, identity and security, if you will, between mm -hmm. the workload and the management server, right? So at the moment, mm -hmm. We have a one-way street, right? So we have a street from 
let's say, the management cluster to the workload cluster. But we are uh, talking about observability and talking about service assurance and, and uh, we want to get feedback uh, from the workload cluster to the management cluster. Mm -hmm. We need to uh, address that uh, ASAP in my view. And for me, doing that with the full security in mind, in, I, I would prefer to focus on that side because that's a gap we have. And if we, <laughs> so right now what we, for example, did uh, or are doing is we use a cluster admin secret to do it. And I think we should avoid doing that and come up with a better framework around that. And then we can add or adopt all the frameworks that need that communication uh, using that uh, system. So that baseline, that would be my, uh, my preference. And as such, you would do some workload identity uh, they might not be the network function workload, but it's actually the controllers uh, that lives in those mm -hmm. uh, entities need to be uh, having an identity and needs to be uh, having the right access uh, rights to be able to access certain resources and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if I, mm -hmm. I would I go to mm -hmm. on that topic first, uh, rather than peeling into conflicts, I, because then you have like a, a territory that we have to fix and that, that we have the mm -hmm. whole uh, with. And I think that's always a good thing to focus on such as fakes, but okay. that would be nice to say. Okay, and for this, uh, a possible solution to investigate could be a federation between the AAM that we have on top and the AAM that uh, is already uh, the, the basis for the traffic cluster because uh, uh, as we said uh, in advance, uh, maybe the customer already has uh, its own. So we cannot just uh, uh, put uh, uh, some, uh, how to say, uh, external uh, IDP and uh, centralized uh, uh, the control of the identity in uh, our own local or external. Uh, so we, we, we cannot use just one token, uh, but uh, uh, we need to uh, federate uh, more than one uh, AAM beca because, uh, okay, the constraint is that uh, something is already, already there and uh, uh, we can remove it. We cannot remove it. Okay, sorry, uh, there was can... uh, someone that wanted to speak and that I didn't see. Sorry, sorry, I didn't want to. Okay, I, I think I'll have to, you know, uh, cut the line here, but I think one, one particular use case that uh, Wim brought out, uh, brought to mm -hmm. the front is, is about the specific uh, secrets that we are currently creating in the management clusters, which are needed uh, for, and the access is needed uh, by the, uh, by the, by the worker cluster. So Wim, while, while, while we were talking, uh, I just created the sample diagram. Does it actually make sense as to what the requirement is? So we have, can we have share, video, which can you share? Uh, am I sure? <clears throat> Do you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, no. okay. okay, that's weird. Uh, yes, now. Now we can see. Yeah. Mm. Can you see the screen, Will? Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Yes, uh, uh, we can see yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So the specific requirement here is that in the management cluster, we have Gitty, which is actually pushing the secret. Uh, ideally, eventually, the secret has to be pushed into secrets manager. And the worker clusters need access to that that particular secret, and it should be read access, right? Like, and so the question is, yeah. but that's 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 happen? purely. Mm. So this is purely mm. secrets for to access Gitty, right? But mm. going right. forward, right? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, what we want, for example, I look at the use case that we reviewed on Friday, right? There was mm. a use case, for example, for OA, uh, from Oram, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. They are deploying uh, network functions, right? But okay. they want to get feedback of the success or the failure or the status of that network function. So it's not purely to Gitty, no, no, but it's no, no, also, no. for example, we need to, so there is, there will be components in the network, in the workload clusters, like the one you drew, right. and they need to report information uh, or uh, the management cluster needs to uh, fetch the data and they need to do that in a secure way. So the communication that we I'm talking about is both ways. It's either absolutely, from the workload absolutely. cluster, cluster I, but also management cluster to the workload cluster. Yeah. And doing that with the right uh, identity as mm -hmm. well as with the right access controls uh, to okay. control Question. that uh, communication. Yeah. Question, so, when you say something, uh, uh, something more than Git, 
uh, you are mentioning a, a lot of things, but uh, it seems that our, uh, everything is uh, access to the API uh, server on, on the, on the, um, on the workload cluster. API server is enough? Yeah, so correct. So, so okay, so this is another uh, discussion. <laughs> We're yeah, going yeah, to yeah, details, yeah, but, yeah, I think I think yes, we're but to but it's essentially not bad, I think, right? So okay, so option one is is indeed API server, right? And I would prefer that. But what you see is that, for example, when you look at the edge watcher that Google did, it was a gRPC uh -huh. endpoint, right? So they basically spin out their own gRPC endpoint, and as a result, you have to deal with all the access identity, RPAC, and stuff like that for mm -hmm. a new communication channel. So I would uh, pro I, or promote uh, to start with the API server and focus on the API server only. And if we really mm -hmm. need to add additional endpoints, we can mm -hmm. consider that, but let's focus on the API server as a starting point. That would be my okay. Uh, okay, proposal. Okay. So, so for the API server, uh, more than uh, uh, just a secret, uh, we need. Um, <laughs> we need. I, I. I think that uh, the the solution could be uh, having uh, a, a token, but not the the token uh, related to the service account of Kubernetes, but uh, a, a real uh, a OpenID Connect token that is uh, yeah. released, uh, emitted by uh, NAIM that could be or uh, the one of the customer, or uh, the one that uh, uh, we, we propose as uh, in the reference architecture. Uh, uh, and then uh, we use that token uh, in order to provide the access also to this uh, uh, traffic cluster. And in that, yeah. uh, just summarizing, uh, I have the action that uh, someone from outside uh, go to porch and change some package or whatever, and so authenticate uh, uh, toward uh, the AIM, okay? Internal, external, but uh, our own, let me say. Uh, and then uh, using that token uh, that has to be configured also on the uh, cluster, uh, on the workload cluster, you could access that uh, workload cluster. If the workload cluster hasn't already their own uh, um, AIM mechanism. If otherwise uh, uh, there is already a, a customer AIM mechanism, at that point we need to, uh, uh, to federate and our own with that one. Uh, and uh, this is a, a little more complex, but I think it's possible and we, we can go in this direction to investigate. I, I don't, I said too many things, not sure. I, I think there yeah, are, we have to. Is, yeah. is it clear? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the, the, let me uh, regurgitate to what Vim said. Vim, you want to, you know, the, going through the API server channel and uh, mm -hmm. to talking to, and then we want to secure API server. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the, you know, yes. the, to secure API server, uh, not just secret or, but also other needed, the manual are set. And then mm -hmm. it's possible each workload center cluster, they have their own item. Then mm -hmm. is the management cluster item or external item we may need to federate. That's the, we, I yes. haven't done before, but little complicated, but that's the items capability. Uh, decent item they can configure that federation. So, okay, that's my understanding, Vim. So we're going through API server. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, no, no, I'm done. Uh, I have spoken enough. Uh, uh, no. So you know, this this discussion is not going to end, right? So I think we need a focused discussion towards this this end, maybe in the coming week. Uh, but before coming to that discussion, right, we need two things. One is specific requirements from the from the workload identity perspective and specific use cases that we need to fulfill towards that end. So, uh, mm. uh, one thing is we are hoping that by the end of uh, Feb, right, like we have a high level uh, clarity on what the requirements that we want to take forward and then get some acceptance or some validation from Signally, Seek Automation, other working groups, uh, the uh, other other things within within nephew right like because I, I'm worried right now that we might be thinking too much in a you know within this group and we might have to expose some of the points that we are discussing outside of this group so so that mm. 
uh, without that, we cannot do the prioritization, right? Otherwise, we'll be trying yeah, to solve, yeah. uh, we'll be chasing rainbows uh, without, without making I agree. Sense. I agree. We need to so focus Raul, are on you, yeah. Are you yeah. aware about the Friday meetings that are happening to scope? Uh, so we go through the user store. So what happens uh, uh. if I explain a little bit? So the yeah. So there is different working groups in SIG 1, okay? Mm -hmm. Now you are in IHU a special SIG 1 for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think of it like that, right? Okay. Uh, you're a bit, uh, you're more than that, but, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, just in this context, think about it like that. What they are doing is on the Friday meeting, we are trying to identify or go to the use cases mm -hmm. that we feel ready to get to the, for the next release, if you will, in which okay. case right now it's R3. Yeah. And then we discuss it between uh, people from SIG 1, SIG 2, and then your SIG. And then we basically say, go for it or not, or uh, please figure this out. But this can also be a um, journey, right? So you do some pieces in R3, then some pieces in R4, some pieces, mm -hmm. or you don't do anything in R3, but you do a POCO or something like that. Right. So all these things can be discussed. But that's the vehicle at the moment that we have in order mm -hmm. to... Uh, provide visibility to the wider things. So, so similar things are happening, for example, in ORAM. They are, so there is a dedicated working group. And so then, I, let's say last Friday, they presented uh, some of these use cases and then we reviewed them. And I, so Bash, who is on the call, he's doing policy and service assurance, right? So he's mm -hmm. doing the same thing. So all of, I, so that's kind of the vehicle to to communicate around these things. Now, in your case, I think because they are very big topics, mm. we might uh, just use it to, I, without being fully ready as a use case, at least make it visible what you're considering, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's and, a good thing. Correct, correct. At a high level, uh, we need to ensure that the approach that we are thinking, possibly thinking, might be in a step mm -hmm. in the right direction, right? Like, the, I, I'm just worried yeah. that right now uh, we don't have that visibility. Anyways, thank you. Thank you. Uh, definitely helps. Uh, uh, thank you for letting us know about the Friday meetings. Uh, I'm hoping few of us could join that. I, I certainly look forward to joining that. Appreciate it. The idea is if you want to be on the agenda that the week ahead of time, you put yourself into the agenda. That's right, right, right. Thing. Just uh, FYI. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go through the calendar uh, and then, you know, uh, pop it on the six security Slack as well for others to check. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Shubhash, are you on call? Uh, maybe yep. take, uh, five minutes, possible. Aral, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, Shubhash, we can hear you. Yep, uh, sure. Uh, so actually, I would like to uh, revisit on the package validation. Mm -hmm. uh, that is just to let me share my screen. Yeah, let me know if it's uh, visible. It is visible, yes. Yeah. So actually, uh, last time when we were discussing, so we had the question on this package validation. So we wanted to hook a package validation in the approval controller. And uh, uh, whenever like uh, package is available uh, in a in a uh, proposed state, we would like to do uh, one validation on, uh, onto it uh, based on the policy or more specifically OPA policy. Or uh, maybe uh, you could uh, uh, have uh, some uh, third-party policy validation also uh, that uh, we, we could have, uh, we, uh, we could uh, do it. So the question, uh, question uh, was asked actually uh, from the VIM. Uh, uh, actually, uh, we could apply the policy directly, directly on the management cluster and uh, they could uh, validate it. So because there was time constraint, so I was not able to uh, clarify, uh, clarify it. What happens actually uh, when we prepare the package? The the package contains the, all all the KRMs, right? And we would like to, and also uh, we are uh, uh, we would like to have the packages a best a secured one or best having the best practices. And uh, this actually this KRMs is uh, not applied on the management cluster. So the policy uh, which we are configuring on the management cluster. Will not uh, get any um, uh, uh, notification on on its creation or its uh, modification or deletion. Nothing uh, it, it will receive it. So what exactly we can do it? Uh, we could have a policy uh, a validation uh, validation controller or package validation controller here, which can query uh, query all the packages. The, uh, those are in a proposed state, and they are in the they are in the position that it is getting promoted from the proposed. Uh, sorry. Uh, they are they are in the 
they are transitioning from the proposed to approved state. So at that, this time, actually, we, we can uh, tap on uh, those packages and we can uh, we can uh, uh, we can validate against our policy so th that is the uh, that is the one point like uh, this uh, uh, just uh, to understand uh, uh, once again the krms are not applied in the management cluster so the policy configured on the management cluster will, uh, cannot uh, validate it so we have to explicitly run those policies on those package to validate it uh, that is the one point and second point what i wanted to brought on uh, brought in this uh, this uh, actually, uh, framework. There are multiple workload cluster, right? So we we would be having a different uh, policies related to different uh, uh, workload cluster, uh, like uh, some some um, uh, some workload uh, workload uh, cluster owner. They say that uh, I can I can uh, have certain uh, po uh, certain policies. I would not allow certain IPs, or I would not allow certain uh, VLANs. So based on that workload cluster, also we could have the policy, and we can uh, we can uh, validate the package against uh, the policy which are targeted for the specific workload. Because packages are again having a bunch of resource uh, related to the workload, right? So uh, th those work uh, that workload resource we can actually match it, and we can fetch the policies re related to that workload cluster. And uh, th that will help us to validate against uh, 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 those kind of uh, policies. So this uh, this two distinguishing uh, feature would be provided by uh, this package validation uh, uh, framework. So that I was think uh, that was I was proposing that this user histories uh, actually can help us on the package validation before uh, we deploy the package in the workload cluster. So any questions actually, Rahul or Vim? Hello. No, uh, so. Yeah, when uh, I don't have any specific questions, so basically I was going to ask for a uh, review for, to the wider channel here. Uh, when mm -hmm. you seem to be unmuted, any, any specific points? Yeah, I think, I, so first, I think your use case with IP address are not really security related things. I, uh, it's yeah. my comment. So that's uh, one, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, what, what I was trying to say, uh, I think last time was that so there is multiple ways you can do this, right? So you can do this either as part of the approval controller, right? In which case, mm -hmm. uh, he is, uh, yeah, he's doing that as part of the approval process, right? Through, uh, through the, the system, right? Which is basically one of the IDs that we had right now. The other one is that you basically uh, make a uh, decouple it and that you uh, build uh, your own uh, independent thing before the approval uh, thing happens, right? Now, my comment is uh, this, Subesh, is that we need to re-architect this whole part in Porch, independent of this use case, <laughs> uh, which makes your uh, use case a little bit uh, a challenge given the 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 refactoring we have to do inside of port because you see right now it takes a long time before something gets approved and stuff like that and it's because we have we the whole way this is done is very fragile and so uh, i think we have to do that first before tackling other uh, capabilities uh, because we uh, the system at the moment is way too fragile uh, to to add something and you see that there is Loop sometimes approval problem happen. Uh, so that's something we have to tackle first before we go to the next stage. Uh, uh, sorry, Viva, I missed some last uh, uh, few points. Uh, but actually, uh, uh, I was thinking, uh, let's start with this uh, this first step. And once we re-architect the porch, at that time, we'll try to, again, adjust the uh, uh, policies. The basic idea of uh, this framework will be working around the policies, right? So whenever things will change, uh, we would be having the policy. And thing is that only we will uh, configure those policies on, on the uh, porch. So that way, the essence of this user story will remain same, a policy-driven package validation. Yeah, but there, there's nothing new with what OPA does today, right? So you could run this whole thing to OPA and you basically put up your rules and you're done, right? Yeah. Actually, we are doing it, but uh, yeah, again, uh, it's like uh, uh, we are we are doing uh, we are uh, configuring Nepio 
to have a, this package validation. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to say is that because of the changes mm -hmm. we have to do, right? Mm -hmm. I, what I'm trying to tell you is fixing this in the current porch is very hard. Hmm. Okay. So my advice is not to do so and wait till we have refactored it and then we can consider things. Uh, okay. Uh, but we, uh, yeah, uh, the thing is that means I wanted to visualize the policy. So I, I'm, I'm still hoping that Porsche will. Uh, See, so what I'm trying to say is that if you try to fix a broken system, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Adding more features on a broken system is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. okay. But yeah, how we will decide uh, which thing actually uh, we should, I mean, like uh, which thing. Uh, uh, not to enhance actually to that. No, but, Still, uh, in this case, if the but, what, I'm, what I'm basically just... saying, Subash, I, your use case remains valid. What I'm saying is, but we have to first fix the base before you can add uh, more features to the base. Okay. And is that discussion happening anywhere, uh, when about uh, the, the so at the, the moment it's a bit with... stalled, but we will we will uh, have that uh, soon. Once I so I think release two is out of the door. We will so we moved ports inside of Nephew, right? And, mm -hmm. So that's going to be the next conversation we'll have to. Oh, we'll uh, have Porch to is uh, formally part of Nephew now, so it's been moved, uh, uh, transferred. Yeah, okay. it's part of. So if you go to Nephew project, you see Porch there, right? Yeah, but the uh, the project existed somewhere else, right? Like the the upstream project. Yeah, existed. it was part of Kept. Uh, it was part of Kept, but now it's okay. part of Porch. Uh, it's okay. part of Nephew. Okay. 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 Oh. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, then what exactly the finally we can no, no, do no, like, no. Uh, like, like if, there, if there is a prerequisite on porch, uh, making making uh, like as we've said, right? Like, I, I'm not aware of the details here, so that that's what I cannot really comment any further. Uh, but mm -hmm. if there is a dependency on porch and there is an architectural dependency on porch, uh, then, then that has to be mm -hmm. fixed before we can go ahead on this. So it would be nice. If you can understand what that problem is and bring it to the table, uh, it, it is. It would be nice to understand what that uh, the, the the change that needs to be done in the bush is fundamental. Uh, so that part, I'm I'm, I'm a little bit uh, hazy on. And one of the things that we are discussing, Rahul, is what do we do with Porch, which is part of this. But for example, mm -hmm. today when we deploy the whole thing, right? I think mm -hmm. for people who have tried it, mm -hmm. it takes close to forty five minutes uh, okay. or something like. That. Okay. So normally this should happen in like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the reason that most of the things takes a long time is to get an approval for a package takes two, three minutes just for one. Okay. Okay. Which is not normal, right? So, and we have been trying to look at, I mean, I, I have, uh, I've looked into the details here personally mm -hmm. of what we should uh, change. So it's a rather uh, drastic uh, fix that we should do in my view. Okay. Uh, uh, but I, mean, I have one general question uh, that, uh, like, uh, currently uh, we depend. I mean, like, a porch is the central part of uh, uh, Napier. I would say it's the heart of the Napier. So should we stop development in another aspect just because uh, there is a change in the porch? We think is the uh... so so see we are not so for example we can do I so there is a number of things that we can do which are not depending mm -hmm. on it right so at the moment we have a certain system like I for example if you look to all the use cases that we have for all round mm -hmm. they use the system as this they are not trying to right. extend it right. right so that's fine I there's nothing to change because for them they will not see a change uh, basically right. right it's not because here what you're trying to do you're trying to add on something that we have to fix, and that's the problem. Okay. Okay, okay. And it could um, have implications, right? So, so Shubhas, the, the point is that it might have implications once it is fixed, you know, mm -hmm. uh, redoing it again. And there's no point. Uh, in, in, so, so, okay, first let's, let's understand what the uh, point is, what the, the, the change would require. I'm not sure if that is something that is targeted towards R3 release or 
or what it is. That, uh, it's not I to do the refactoring. You cannot even do it in an R three release, uh, Rahul. If you're right, so okay. it will. This will be. So I think I my I. This has to be discussed, right? But mm. for me, there is some let's say rework required, and uh, yeah, given this is uh, a huge task. It's not going to happen in R3. Uh, it's impossible. Okay. I see. Okay. 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 So, so Vim, I would suggest uh, let's uh, move forward with this uh, this user story and let's try to build on it. And uh, we will identify, Miss what are the things need refactoring and that we will uh, uh, that we will uh, absorb uh, while while we will uh, discuss in R4 around the porch. So that time we will absorb it. Do you think is the right approach? So Shushubash, the point is, yep. you know, the, the, from the prioritization perspective, right? Like, you know, is mm -hmm. this a problem? Like, is this a burning issue that has to be fixed? Uh, there okay. are other hurdles as well that, uh, you know, so so I, I think if we, we, look, eventually when we take it back to the to the, the, to, to the wider NEFIC community, we're going to hear mm -hmm. similar thoughts. Uh, like, you know, uh, do we want to, I mean, certainly if you want to continue on this path, make sure that the requirements are in place, and they those get reviewed. We might, and, and you know, we want we might want to do the review part, uh, handle handle yeah, getting handled as part of this uh, this the thing. But like, if it depends critically on a specific system which this particular thing doesn't have any control over, then it becomes untenable, right? Like it it becomes uh, untenable to make sure that we get this thing executed in this particular thing without the prerequisite handle. So uh, the the, the, there are some limitations. There, there are some uh, you know fundamental limitations here. Uh, now, as as a as a group, we need to understand maybe first what that uh, porch uh, problem is. That clearly Vim knows better. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and if, if the point is that it might not even get fixed in R three, then that's a serious concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That, that that's a serious concern whether we'll be able to fulfill this. And if we are not able to fulfill this user story without that particular prerequisite being done. Then, 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 what's the point in you know because things change directly, things would change in the next six months, right? Like, uh, but Rahul, I would say uh, that might affect multiple things, right? So, does it mean we'll stop working on all the other user stories? All the other user no, stories no, no, do no, not no, have no, impact no. on this, right? Yeah. No, no, so this only impacts user story that wants to extend the system that is in uh, that is uh, that is uh, affected, right? So here you are okay. basically. Changing a core of something that is, let's say, I I call, I broken is maybe too hard of a word, but it's it's there are it's too fragile. Mm -hmm. So if you build on something that is not uh, robust enough, you are going to break it more. That's not a good thing, right? So there is many use cases that have not. I, most of the use cases don't have this dependency. If okay. I'm honest. Okay. Okay. okay this one have. does have. Okay. Okay. Okay, folks. Uh, since we have three more minutes, uh, yep. I would like to make sure that we have an open uh, floor for at least two more minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else that anyone wants to bring it uh, to the floor right now? Okay. I don't hear anything. I know that we weren't able to discuss a few of the other action items, but that should be fine. Uh, we can we can get back on Slack for those discussion. Uh, 30 more seconds. Uh, anyone else wants to say anything in the context of what we discussed today or anything in general? Now is the time. Going once, twice, twice. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day, good week ahead. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.